Clean beauty is a lie. It's a lie. And if you want to click off this video because you just felt a reaction, you felt something in your chest or in your stomach that made you feel bad because you have believed this, please do not feel bad. I am here to tell you that you are not alone. You are not stupid. It is not your fault. These companies exist. They do well. They thrive. They have made the clean beauty industry worth $8.7 billion in 2023 because they are very good at their job. So I am not here to shame you. I do not judge you. I am here to help you to understand that clean beauty may be putting you in danger. And I know that may be anti everything you've seen in the Netflix documentaries. I know that. But what I'm bringing to you today is the science behind why some aspects of clean beauty could actually be putting you in harm's way. You may be asking, what's my motivation? What's my angle for this? My angle is that I don't like liars. I don't like people and companies that trick people into buying things that not only they don't need, that they don't need to pay an extra premium on. And also some of these things could legit be dangerous for you. The biggest, scariest piece of clean beauty is the push for preservative free cosmetics. And I want to talk about that because it's really bothering me. I'm seeing it pop up more and more. And I'm seeing more people buy into this thinking that preservatives in cosmetics are bad. How the heck did we get here? How have cosmetic companies tricked so many people into believing that preservatives are bad? What is the science behind why we need, need to have good preservative systems in our cosmetics? What we can do to protect ourselves by helping our cosmetics to last longer. It also helps our wallets so we don't have to repurchase as often. And also how to tell if our older cosmetics have gone bad. What can we do to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe? That's what this video is about. And if you're interested in this topic, hang tight. I'm about about to get into all of it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to my channel. It is called Jen Love. If you have never been here before, hi, my name is Jen. Welcome, and I am so happy that you are here. If you have been here for a while, welcome back. And you may notice I am playing around with some crispy audio, and I'm hoping that you are enjoying the change. I am still dialing it in, so if it's not perfection, I am working on it. I take your feedback very seriously. And speaking of that, I want to give a disclaimer before we jump into this topic. I am not a cosmetic chemist. I am a nerd. <laughs> I am an ingredient nerd and have been for the past six or seven years on this channel, reaching into ingredients, figuring out what they do in our cosmetics based on scientific research, but I am not formally trained in this area. The vast majority of this video is not going to be from my perspective, though. It's going to be from the professionals, from the resources linked below. I have also run my script by friend of the channel, Perry Romanowski, who runs the Beauty Brains podcast. He is a cosmetic chemist and he did suggest that I add a couple of facts just for clarity for you. So I have added those in. And speaking of that, if you have never listened to the Beauty Brains podcast, I highly recommend if you enjoy this type of video. It can be downloaded anywhere you download podcasts. It is so good. I personally listen to it on my iPhone on the podcast app. It's not a boring, dry, I'm a scientist kind of podcast. It is lighthearted sometimes. It is serious sometimes. But most importantly, it is based in science. So if you are a valuer of science like I am, highly recommend that podcast. But back to this video, I also want to stress that this is an overview of a scientific topic. So of course, it's going to miss some little nuances. I'm not going to talk about every single study that has ever been done. There are going to be some holes in this video. There's no way I could talk about every single little thing in an interesting way. It's just not freaking possible, okay? So I want you to take this video for exactly what it is, an ingredient nerd, someone who really cares about this stuff, really cares 
cares about the safety of consumers digesting and spitting out scientific information. So I don't know if this needs to be said, but just in case, please do your own research and look in sources that you trust. Again, all of my sources will be in the video description down below. Where we need to start in this video is the fear of preservatives. Where did that come from? And it comes from the food industry. We are taught that food with preservatives, there's a reason why they need to be preserved and it's because they're not natural and it's because they are not good for our bodies. If you don't use preservatives, then those foods are inherently more healthy for you. In short, nature good, not nature bad. Our brains are very binary. We wanna categorize things into either good or bad categories and preservatives versus no preservatives is a great way to do that in the food industry. Then we also start seeing marketing like sugar-free, fat-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, preservative-free, all of the frees. And what that triggers in our brain, because again, we want to simplify things. We've got a lot going on. We want to simplify things. So when we see something is free of something, we automatically, our brain clicks and says, well, the thing that it's free of must be bad. And we know that sometimes this is true. We know through science that processed sugar is not good for us. It is bad. So when we see something that has processed sugar, some people try to avoid those kinds of things because they want to be healthier naturally. But just because something is free of something doesn't mean that it's inherently healthy. So for example, a lot of fat-free foods are loaded up with sugar. So even though you may feel like you're getting something good from the fat-free, you're getting all of the sugar, which of course is not good for you. So there are nuances to all of these free things, but our brains wanting to do all of the shortcuts automatically demonize anything a product is free from. But you may see the problem with direct one-to-one -one comparing food to cosmetics in that there is no foundation trait. Beauty blenders do not grow in the ground like potatoes, okay? It's not real. You All cosmetics are man-made. Even the most natural of things have been processed in some way by humans. They need preservatives and the ones that really need those preservatives are ones that have any kind of water in them. Why is that? It's because water is a breeding ground for all of the nasties. Germs, bacteria, all of the things thrive in water. But it's not just the ingredient water. It's ingredients that naturally have water. Things like aloe vera have a high concentration of water, so that product also must be preserved. In addition to that, anything that comes in contact with water, any kind of soaps, cleansers, shampoo bars, they all must have preservatives. The only exception to this is if they have a very high pH or a very low pH. I'm not gonna be begging you to stay. One of the things I think people fear with preservatives, it's the fear of the unknown. What is a preservative? What is this chemical that I'm putting on my skin? Well, you probably already know that preservatives can either be chemically made or naturally derived, but either way, they are processed by human beings. This is so, so important. Whether it is naturally derived or synthetically produced, it is still a chemical. All of those natural preservatives are still chemicals. Water is a chemical. Your cosmetics are made up of many, many, many chemicals. And it does not matter whether it says clean on it or natural on it, there are still chemicals in that product because that's what makeup is cosmetics are made out of. They're all made out of chemicals. Chemicals are not inherently bad. It's also so important to recognize that a naturally derived ingredient is not inherently safer or better than one that is made in a lab because a lab is controlled. They know how to make it. It's a recipe. It is specifically made and been tested and known to perform the way that it's supposed to perform for however many decades or years that that ingredient has been made by scientific professionals. With nature, nature is unpredictable. We are not in control of nature. All we are in control of is what happens when that natural thing goes into the lab to be processed and put into your cosmetics. I'm not saying that things that are chemically derived are automatically safer than things that are naturally derived. What I'm saying is, is we need to stop that binary thought that just because it comes from nature, it is safer or healthier for you. So what do preservatives actually do. They protect us from yeast, mold, and bacteria. That's their job. 
Because of this, they help to extend the shelf life of the product so that you can use them for longer. And also, it helps the active ingredients in the products to stay active for longer. Sometimes in natural cosmetic marketing, they try to pass off antioxidants as preservatives. Antioxidants and preservatives are different, they are not the same thing. Antioxidants are things that stop other things from what they call oxidizing. It's the thing that happens when the air hits the thing. A perfect example of this that you're gonna recognize from your real life is an apple. So you cut the apple, you leave it on the counter for a little while and it starts to turn brown. And I remember my kids when they were little, they would not eat a brown apple. And I tried to, to tell them, even though it just it, it's just a little bit brown, it's fine. It is not bad for you. It has not gone bad. It's just the oxidation. A great antioxidant that we use both in our cosmetics and also on our apples is citrus juice. So you can put your cut apples in a little bit of citrus juice and it will stop it from turning brown as fast. But what it won't do is it won't stop the apple from rotting eventually. It's the same thing with antioxidants in cosmetics. And I think where it gets confusing is that antioxidants are often used to keep oils from going rancid, but that is not the same as preserving the product. Yesterday, I would handle this shit differently. Things are different, I'm a new one. That's not one of the oldest preservatives in cosmetics are parabens. They have been used since the 19th. 30s. So why are people so afraid of parabens and why have a lot of cosmetic companies stop using them completely? Why when we go onto Sephora's website or Ulta's website, all of the cosmetic companies say that the product is paraben free? If parabens were fine, why are we trying so hard to stay away from them? Well, there are two major fears when it comes to parabens. The first one is cancer. The second one is endocrine disruption. So let's go ahead and start with the cancer claim. A study came out in 2004 and what they did was they tested breast tissue and they showed that there were parabens found in cancerous breast tissue. It was also found in the healthy breast tissue. You've probably heard me say this a million times, but correlation does not mean causation. Just because something is absorbed into the body or absorbed into the blood does not mean that it is causing any kind of negative health effects. I know it sounds creepy and that's what the marketers want you to think is that it's creepy, but there are things absorbed into our bodies all the time just from our daily living. But if our bodies were so sensitive to everything that they absorbed, we nobody would be here. We'd all be dead. This is something that Perry suggested that I add in and it is that in this 2004 study, they never said that parabens cause cancer. That wasn't the conclusion. The conclusion was we found this, we need more research. But the media and the clean beauty advocates and people wanting to make a lot of money by creating a new cosmetic category ran with it and made everybody afraid when that was not the intention of the study. So what about the estrogen-like effects? Where did that come from? It came from rat in my studies and in vitro studies where, that's the petri dish studies, where they found that in rats and mice, parabens caused disruption. But according to science, humans do not metabolize parabens the same way that rats and mice do. We would not expect an elephant to metabolize things the same way we do. We should not expect our bodies to metabolize the same things the way that rats do. Our bodies are just different. So what this should do is that it should spur further research, and it has. And that research has not found estrogen-like effects in humans. But of course, clean beauty doesn't want you to know that. Parabens have been found to be one of the least irritating, the least sensitizing, and the most effective preservative in cosmetics. But a lot of companies are not using it because of all of the misinformation, which is one of the reasons why I'm yelling right now. I want to yell it from the rooftops. Parabens were so popular in cosmetics and they're not now because of this fear. So what did companies replace them with? They replaced them mostly with a preservative called phenoxyethanol. If you grab any cosmetic product you have right now, look on the back, look at the very bottom of the ingredient list, you will probably find phenoxyethanol. 
Phenoxyethanol is a great preservative. It's not quite as good as parabens, but it is a great preservative. It's also wonderful for people with sensitive skin, but even with phenoxyethanol, there are some people that say phenoxyethanol is dangerous. Of course they do. Now I'm gonna talk about an ingredient called phenoxyethanol. Um, phenoxyethanol is a very, very popular um, ingredient in a lot of skincare products, especially ones that are claiming to be natural as well. Um, and it has been found to be extremely inert and really good for people that do have sensitive skin. It got a really bad reputation, again, similar to parabens because of some studies that just weren't actually um, as, they weren't very conclusive and they didn't really represent the situation that phenoxyethanol is ever used in. So it was, um, you know, the, the study that really made it famous as being irritating to the skin, it was actually injected subdermally, so actually injected under the skin, and that's when irritation was found. It was also injected, at, I think it was at 10% and 100%. So phenoxyethanol in a formula, you're never going to have it at more than 1%. Therefore, this was not a very accurate representation of how much of this compound you're being exposed to and how sensitizing it could be. As well, mostly for topical application, you're not going to have it go under the um, under the skin and actually be in the skin to cause irritation and sensitization. So bit of a misrepresentation on how this ingredient is actually used in formulations and then how it was tested for irritation and sensitivity. This is a kicker. I bet some people who have been buying into this, and again, I do not blame you. It is not your fault. These people are so good at convincing you that things are real when science says they are not real. Preservative-free cosmetics, a lot of them still have preservatives in them. And it's because a lot of ingredients are multifunction. There have actually been a couple of class action lawsuits in 2024 that they are literally suing these cosmetic companies because of the multi-use of some of these ingredients. And the kicker on these lawsuits that drives me absolutely bonkers is that the grounds for these class action lawsuits is that they are saying that if they had known that there was a preservative in these products against the claims on the packaging, they wouldn't have purchased them. That's where we are, my friends. That's where we are. So for example, there is a 15-page lawsuit against Aquaphor right now. It says, per the complaint, the company has allegedly misrepresented the beauty product to cash in on consumers' increasing desire for clean cosmetics, i.e. items that have more natural or free from synthetic additives like preservatives. The plaintiff, a New York City resident who has purchased the Aquaphor product numerous times, claims she would not have paid as much for the item or bought it at all had she had known its preservatives preservative free representation was false. Oh my gosh, this it's horrible. It's so bad. Then the second one, it's very similar from Neutrogena. They claim that because the product has citric acid in it, that it, quote, acts as an antioxidant by inhibiting enzymes. And it also has certain antimicrobial properties that inhibit the growth of some bacteria and mold. And they say this is misleading to customers who are looking for clean beauty. This is how bad this is. My friends, there have been multiple products recalled or big, huge Reddit threads of people talking about their products going moldy for years. The first one that I found on the internet, which I know is not the first one, but the first one that I can link for you down below is Origins. That was in 2013. They recalled a batch of their mega mushroom soothing face cream because of the presence of mold. They said because of the mold, there was a heightened risk of infection for some consumers, such as individuals with compromised skin, weakened immune systems, or contact lens wearers. Then this is the one that really brought it to my attention because I had this product, the Herbivore Pink Cloud Moisturizer. It was recalled by Sephora in the spring of 2019 due to mold contamination. On the Skincare Addiction Reddit page, they also talked about other herbivore products that they thought had gone bad, like the Moon Fruit Serum that was also in 2019 and the Blue Tansy Mask in 2022. And it's pretty clear if you see what these products are supposed to look like, 
that these are not safe to use. You may or may not remember this one. Becca recalled their Light Shifter Brightening Concealer. It was a voluntary recall in May of 2020 after a brownish black material identified as common household mold was found on the sponge tip applicator of some units. They said at the time that they believed that the mold was unlikely to cause serious injury, but there was risk of temporary skin or eye irritation. And the one that comes front of mind for me was the most recent one from Kosas in 2022. If you frequent Reddit or TikTok, people are still talking about this because it was disgusting. The thing is, my friend, is that these are just the ones we know about. Because if someone has a problem with their product going bad, they may just contact the manufacturer directly. They may not spread it all over social media, or they may not realize their products are moldy at all and just continue to use them. Because the scary part, my friend, is that mold, bacteria, and yeast are not visible most of the time to the human eye. When the mold gets bad enough, of course, you're going to see it, but not when it first starts forming. And also, those things can just blend in with the natural color of the product. And Perry wanted me to add here that it's not just about the product smelling bad, it's about that these products are legit dangerous. He said that we want to protect formulas from microbes because they can spread diseases and that is a real health hazard. Even if you're asking, even, even if you're asking, cause I do. You can still do the sniff test when you first get a product, especially a liquid or cream product. Smell it, get used to the way that it smells so that when it smells off, you know and you notice the change. A second reliable source, which really sucks, but it is a reliable source, is your skin itself. If you've been using a product for a while and you start noticing that your skin is breaking out or getting irritation or getting a rash after you use it, chances are there's something funky going on in your product. Please throw it away. And people are hesitant to throw products away, especially if there's a lot left because products are expensive, my friend. They're expensive. And even I have kept products that are way too old and continued to use them when I know I probably shouldn't because I just really love them and I don't want to buy another one or it's something that's been discontinued. But it really is important for us to hold ourselves accountable. And when we know something has gone off, especially keeping an eye on those products that have water in them, they really need to be thrown away. Even when formulated properly and well, the shelf life of a natural cosmetic is going to be less than one that is formulated with synthetically made preservatives. So you have to know if you're going to choose to buy natural cosmetics, you will probably need to throw those products away faster. So keeping an eye on those expiration dates is gonna be really important. We work hard for our money and we pick and choose the products that we want to buy and we want to keep them good for as long as possible. So how do we do that? Because in reality, even synthetically derived preservatives are not going to keep something good forever. If you remember nothing from this video, remember that water is the enemy when it comes to keeping your products good. Even if you get ready in your bathroom, you want to keep your products out of your bathroom away from humidity. We're going for cool, dry place skincare, makeup, everything. Some products are also sensitive to direct sunlight, so it's best to keep them in a makeup bag or in a drawer. I will tell you this next one I'm really bad at, but you could be really good at it. So therefore, I am sharing it with you. And it's having a system for when you opened a product and keeping track of how long you've had that product open so you know when to throw it away. I will link an iPhone app that I've been using for years. Using, wanting to use, I'm I mean, let's be honest, I don't use it as much as I should, but it's a great app for organizing and figuring out when you need to throw something away. And no matter how painful it is, we need to take the shelf lives seriously of our products that contain water, especially our foundations, our concealers, and also anything that touches the inner eye or the lips, because those are the most likely to get our natural bacteria into the products. So a natural mascara, oh my gosh, please be careful careful because if they don't have a strong preservative system, you're getting your, you know, eye juice. <laughs> you're getting your eye juice on the wand. 
You're putting your eye juice back into the tube that holds the rest of the product. This is a breeding ground. Also, anything that you're using your fingers when you're, you're applying it, you know, anything for your lips that you may be applying and going back and forth. Of course, we know this washing our hands before we do any of that is a good idea. And another thing that I will admit I am not great at is cleaning brushes regularly to make sure that bacteria and mold and yeast and all those gross things are not growing on the actual brushes. The clean beauty movement has such a grip on us as consumers because we have been lied to and because we believe those lies mostly due to fear that brands are starting to adapt and say that they are clean or say that they are free from parabens or whatever it may be because not because it's the right thing to do but because they know the grip that the clean beauty movement has on a lot of consumers. And when it comes to preserving this is the most dangerous because this is not going to end until somebody gets very, very sick or a group of people gets very, very sick. And even then, it may not still not die because once a lie seeps into your head, once you get that belief system, it is very difficult to undo. And another piece is that if you have a very strong skin barrier, if you have a very strong immune system, you may be using moldy products all the time on your eyes, on your lips, on your face, and not even realize it. The best way to protect ourselves from getting sick from these products that are not properly preserved is to take care of ourselves. Look at it from our own point of view. Buy products that have parabens. Buy products that have phenoxyethanol to make sure they have strong preservative systems. If you choose to buy more natural cosmetics because you want them, I own a ton of natural cosmetics. Just know that they are going to have a shorter shelf life. So you want to make sure you use those up faster. You also want to buy from reputable brands that you trust, that you know are formulating your cosmetics in the safest way possible. And at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and we try to help each other stay safe and not sick and not put mold on our mouths and all the gross things. We're trying to help each other. That is what this channel Channel is all about. So I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. And I want to make sure that I'm very clear if you have bought these in the past, if you still love them, if you still want to use them, that is 100% your choice. I am not here to judge you. I am not here to tell you what to do. You have to do what is best for you. I am just giving you the information so that you can do with it what you choose to do for your own life, your own body, your own wallet. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out so much. And again, thank you so much to Perry Romanowski from The Beauty Brains. I will link his podcast down below in case you would like to go check it out. And if you would like to watch another video of mine because you are not done, you'd like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you over here to watch, including one that I picked out for you that I think you're gonna like down at the bottom. YouTube's gonna pick the top one based on videos you've watched recently, which one they think you're gonna like. But if you do have to go, cause you have things to do, it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did and mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.